Ladies and gentlemen, listen carefully. This is your captain speaking, and there's something eerie I need to share. Right now, I ask that you buckle your seatbelts tight. In the course of my job, I've traveled a lot, more than 200 times in fact. Usually, things have been smooth, aside from the occasional agonizing flight delays that can make time stretch on. Now, picture this unsettling scene. It was a day filled with darkness, both in the skies and in my gut. I had a business affair on that particular day, so I was meant to fly to New York City, only to rush back to Nashville late that same night. The clock showed 6 in the morning as my flight's departure, causing me to rise at the dreadfully early hour of 3.30 a.m. With a sense of unease, I prepared myself, taking only a small bag for the journey. Summoning a ride through the app, I found myself at the airport's entrance by 4.30 a.m. I was drawn towards the TSA checkpoint, my apprehension growing. Suddenly, a man, his features a mystery, clothed in a Tennessee Titans t-shirt, lurked behind me. As a petite person, I've learned to be cautious, especially in unsettling locations such as airports. Past odd encounters have taught me this much. Yet, despite my experiences, paranoia wasn't my usual state. However, this man was different. It was just a week before Christmas, the air thick with tension. People bustled around, yet he managed to stay uncomfortably close, shadowing my every move for at least 10 unsettling minutes. Trying to dispel my growing fear, I slipped into a restroom nearby, holding my breath. Minutes dragged by, and upon stepping out, he was nowhere in sight near the bathroom door. Relief swept over me, maybe I had imagined it all. Heading back into the main passage, dread clawed back as I caught sight of him lurking around the corner. My peripheral vision caught his unwavering gaze, but I pressed on, determined not to show my fear. Panic began to weave its web around my heart. I glanced back intermittently, and every time, he was right there, shadowing me like a haunting specter. My best hope, I decided, was to move through TSA, maybe lose him in the shuffle of security. The line ahead stretched impossibly long, and I joined, trying to appear normal while my insides twisted with dread. If this were merely a cruel coincidence, it seemed to have an uncanny grip on me. To my chilling realization, he stood just behind me in the line, his presence intensifying my discomfort. The gravity of the situation sank in, and I made a swift exit, closing the gap between myself and a uniformed police officer. Trembling, I indicated the figure to the officer, whose demeanor was reassuringly gentle. He promised to handle it, guiding me to the front of the line, affording me temporary escape. His intent was to approach the mysterious figure, and as he neared, the stranger abruptly turned and retreated into the shadows. A peculiar air hung about the scene, and I exhaled as relief coursed through my veins. It seemed the enigmatic pursuer was finally relenting. But this was not the end of the haunting. Boarding my flight, a shiver ran down my spine as the plane soared into the night. Touching down at JFK in New York, the ominous aura clung to me. I hailed a ride and journeyed into the darkness of the city, my heart still heavy with unease. After concluding my tasks, I navigated my way to the hotel. A few precious hours lay before me before the impending return to the airport later that night. Turning on my phone, the first time since my arrival, I rested on the hotel bed and checked in with my mother and a couple of friends. Given that the company phone had served my meeting needs, this was my moment to reconnect personally. As the clock relentlessly moved forward, the time to head back to the airport loomed. Ordering my final Uber for the day, I climbed into the car, a sense of unease lingering. During the ride, a peculiar notification lit up my phone screen, AirTag found moving with you. The words puzzled me, their meaning was elusive. I sought answers on the web, skimming through a couple of articles. They all hinted at the unnerving possibility of being tracked. The unsettling feeling gnawed at me, yet the full scope of the situation remained obscure. Seeking clarity, I inquired of the driver, a young man in his twenties, if he had insights into the enigmatic alert. To my relief, he was well versed in the matter and even had an air tag of his own. 
He unraveled the mystery, describing an AirTag as an Apple device designed to track valuable possessions in case they went astray. He even displayed his wallet adorned with one, disclosing that Apple's security system occasionally glitched, sending alerts to individuals in the proximity of an AirTag user. Reassured by his explanation, I learned that this was not the first instance of passengers receiving such messages. The alert he had mentioned was triggered by the AirTag attached to his wallet. It seemed my knowledge was now up to date, though a pang of feeling out of touch lingered. Grateful for his insight, I thanked him upon reaching the airport and embarked on my journey back home. Once the plane touched down, a swift exit from the airport led me to the parking lot, a rare occurrence due to the absence of waiting for luggage. Weariness gripped me, my eyelids heavy as I drove home. Suddenly, a new alert pierced the quiet in the car. I glanced at my phone, and a cold wave of dread swept over me. AirTag found moving with you. The message was clear, its implications chilling. This wasn't tracking my Uber anymore, it was something far more sinister. My heart raced, and I grasped the truth. I was now a staggering 13 and a half hours away from the Uber driver. I pulled over on the highway, panic rising within me. Rifling through my bag, I uncovered it, an air tag, innocuously stuck on the inner zipper pocket of my carry-on. Horror took hold of me, and my instinctive response was to fling it out of the window and speed away. The remainder of the journey was a blur, my heart pounding with every beat. The alert hadn't lied, the air tag had indeed tracked me throughout the day. The realization was inescapable, it had been that man from the airport, the one whose presence had sent shivers down my spine. I shuddered at the thought of what could have transpired had I not received that alert or dismissed it entirely. The Uber driver's knowledge had transformed my understanding of the situation from an oddity to an emergency. I felt a profound gratitude for his awareness. Without his guidance, I might have brushed aside the alert, consigning it to oblivion. The truth was undeniable, I had been pursued, monitored, and violated. The haunting certainty that I was right drove home the chilling truth. During high school, my best friend tried out amateur modeling, something that lots of girls in our school were into. She often reached out to photographers using her Instagram. One day, she came to my house, and while we were hanging out, she revealed the profile of a photographer who had sent her a message. This guy was 10 years older than us. When he messaged her, she thought it was about modeling. But there was something unsettling about it. He told her that she could model for him, but that he would much rather take her out on a date. My friend disclosed that she was 17. But he said that it wasn't a big deal to him if it wasn't to her. When she told me this, red flags went off in my mind, but she pretty much just brushed them off, saying that age wasn't a huge factor for her either, even adding that her parents had a bit of an age gap as well. Jumping ahead a few months, this guy told my friend that he had to travel to Colorado for a photo shoot and mentioned he'd like to meet up when he was in town. They kept talking for months, and she kept me in the loop about how she was growing fond of him. When I took a look at his Instagram profile, it was brimming with photographs, but strangely, there were very few pictures showing his face. That was another worrisome sign. Despite my efforts, my friend stayed fixed in her opinion about him. I'm her friend, so I express my thoughts, but I also understand her choices. She's typically pretty rational and responsible, even though she sometimes decides things quickly. I visited her workplace one evening to chat about her plans, and she mentioned that the guy was flying back that day. Although he wasn't initially scheduled to return for a few more weeks, he suddenly started saying he had no one to pick him up at the airport due to a late flight. So. He asked my friend if she could help. She felt uncertain, but her excitement to meet him seemed to override her doubts. I suppose she must have believed that airports were secure, and that's why she agreed to pick him up. 
I knew I couldn't change her mind, and since they had been talking for a while, I felt a bit more okay with the plan. However, I told her that if she was going to pick him up, I wanted to be there too to make sure she wasn't alone. She said okay, and messaged him to let him know she was bringing a friend. He didn't like that at all. He said it would be weird and got really defensive. Then, he suddenly claimed that his flight was about to depart and stopped replying. For the next few hours, we sat in her room, checking if there was a real flight from Colorado scheduled and making sure that everything he had told her matched up. That's when we came up with a very silly idea. We decided to go to the airport in disguises and watch for him to come out of his gate. If he seemed strange or unsettling, she would send him a message saying she couldn't pick him up. But if he looked normal, we'd go back to our car, take off our disguises, and return inside. We arrived there very early to scout for the best hiding spot. With many other people seated around, we squeezed ourselves into the back. I even checked with the help desk to confirm we were in the correct location. We traced his flight on our phones, keeping an eye on its progress. So, we spent time chatting while we waited. I'm not particularly perceptive, so as I continued chatting with my friend, I failed to notice that her face had turned pale. She whispered to me that the guy she'd been communicating with was sitting right next to me. His flight was still about 20 minutes away. There was only one seat between him and my friend, and I happened to be in that seat, and he was aware of it. We casually stood up and made our way to the restroom. When we returned, he had vanished. His flight landed, and no one who looked like him disembarked, and he never messaged my friend again. For months, I was haunted by the fear that he might unexpectedly appear. In January, I went to Washington DC with some close family friends. I come from a small town of about 11,000 people, and I had never been to a city as big as DC. I was terrified because I had seen a lot of scary things on TV. But luckily, the trip ended without anything bad happening. At the DC airport, our flight at 6 in the morning got delayed multiple times because of the weather. Finally, when we got to the Denver, Colorado airport, it was midnight. This meant we couldn't drive the rest of the way home that night as we planned. I usually avoid using the bathroom on airplanes unless I really need to go, so when we landed, I had to go. I went with my mom's friend who also needed to use the restroom. When I finished in the stall, I saw a security lady standing there. I didn't hear anyone else coming into the restroom, and it was completely empty. This was strange because I'm always very careful when I'm at airports. It confused me, but I just smiled at her and washed my hands. About 10 seconds later, I heard a toilet flush. But instead of my friend's mom coming out of the stall, a creepy looking man wearing a black hoodie walked out. He saw the airport employee, looked down, and quickly left the restroom. She followed him out. The restroom clearly had a sign saying it was for women probably because it was so late and everyone was tired. I didn't think much of it at the time, but the next day it hit me. A man wearing a black hoodie in a women's restroom at midnight, with a big sign showing it was for women, was definitely strange. The airport was empty, and I was completely alone with him until the security guard came in. He somehow entered without making any noise. I should have heard his footsteps or even sounds like using the toilet, but I didn't. So, I don't think he actually used the restroom. He probably just pretended by flushing the toilet. I never got to thank the security guard for her help. I realized I could have been in danger. He might have wanted to kidnap, hurt, or attack me. He could have surprised me, and I wouldn't have even known. I didn't really get a good look at his face, but I hope I don't meet him again, and that he doesn't try this with anyone else.